Situated 200 kilometres northwest of Sydney is Bathurst, home to an Australian icon. The Mount Panorama Race Circuit, 6.2 kilometres long, with 174 metres of rise and fall. He's got a great start. It is the most adrenaline-charged racetrack in the country. Side by side through the chase as well. The local talent will tell you it takes a lifetime to master. Great drive out of turn two, and Mustard goes through and grabs the lead. And even the very best race drivers from around the world will say a lap here will take your breath away. Oh, he's all right. He's, he's off. He's out. This bloke has got off coming down the hill. Today, it plays host to its longest race of the year, a gruelling endurance race known as the Liqui Molly Bathurst 12-hour. Hello and welcome to the Liqui Molly Bathurst 12 Hour, located in the central tablelands of New South Wales, an historic town that plays host to 12 hours of non stop action. 53 exotic sports cars from the most prestigious brands in motoring Porsche, Bentley, Audi, Lamborghini, Mercedes, BMW, and McLaren will compete for the coveted 12 Hour Trophy. A breathtaking 6.2 kilometer ride around Mount Panorama. There are 23 turns, narrow sections and blind crests that require maximum commitment with walls either side, leaving no room for error. Expect speeds of around 280 kilometers per hour on the famous Conrod Strait. We've already had plenty of action in the practice and qualifying sessions. No cars were exempt from the unforgiving walls of this circuit. Saint Goddard came off second best in this hit. But the moment of the weekend so far has to go to Will Davison as he spun at 200 kilometers per hour over McPhillamy Park. Lee Holdsworth came unstuck as well, coming through Griffin's bend. But there was no love lost between the teammates back in the pits. Bentley's looked strong after a late arrival to the mountain and pushed hard in the shootout. So too the Audis, who were looking ferocious this weekend. But the story of the shootout was the head-to-head -head battle between BMW and the Audi R8. An outstanding lap by Chaz Mostert saw him grab pole and the Alan Simonson Trophy, BMW's first since 2007. The 2018 Liqui Molly Bathurst 12 hour began in darkness as 49 cars streamed away on the rolling start. And we are now under green flag conditions as we start the second lap. Just under 11 hours and 55 minutes to go. It's absolutely side by side and the pole sitting BMW is going to have to tough it out on the inside and does so. With Mostert comfortably leading, the third place 777 Lamborghini with Luke Yulden at the wheel struck trouble. Oh, no, oh, dramas, seven, dramas. 777. Key contender with damage in the left rear corner. Big trouble, too, for the KTM crossbow. Oh, KTM off at the Bentley elbow, and it's the 48 car. The race was stopped again just shy of the two hour mark after a scary crash at Sulman Park took out three competitors. Happen. Oh, oh and there's been big, a big shot right at the top of the mountain, oh, and that's big. the Hallmark car. A series of incidents stopped the race six times by lap 75, with the race leading BMW receiving a drive through for overlapping at the restart. The number 18 Bentley was also out of contention after a big off at the chase. Oh, right front puncture on that car. Last year's winner Craig Lowndes and his McLaren teammates 
ended their campaign with an overheating engine. Things heated up for Paul Morris in the Mark II. Wow, that's, that's, that's a gone. significant failure. Yeah. It's like an oil line to come off that car. The restart on lap 148 triggered a scary incident. Ouch. An Audi dice at the front forced an error for the 22 in the hands of Kelvin Vanderlinder. Oh. 30 laps on that last stint, that's one in the wall. Right when we're talking about it. And it's gone heavily into the Shannon's dipper wall. By lap 217, Mercedes AMG GT3, co-driven by 2017 winner Jamie Winkup, had the lead from the number 74 Audi with Bentley in third. So many great destinations to visit here in New South Wales. There's the famous Sydney Harbour Bridge, the widest long span bridge and tallest still arch bridge in the whole wide world. Sydney founded in 1788, now home to 4.6 million people. And each year there's more than 10 million visiting from interstate and overseas. Many thousands of those overseas visitors are right here in Bathurst in the Central West this weekend. Here is oh. Mostert in the M6 trying to get past. Oh. Now, Mostert had passed Estra, but Estra passed him straight back. That's right. So they just swapped positions. Now, this is a furious battle. It's third, fourth and fifth on the road. Stephen Cairn is the first of those cars from third down. This little battle pack in behind the uh, leader in the Invitational class, and that's Will Brown behind the wheel of that. It's so close, the BMW and the Porsche. Barely oh, oh, three together, Mostert, I think, just touched it, the wall and possibly the Porsche ahead. And they're almost three wide at the Bentley elbow. That is extraordinary driving the R3 wide. Oh, and it's gone, the Bentley's gone. In with the Class B Porsche, and Mostert is off as well, and picking their way through, I think, was Estra. Estra's gone through. It's yep. the Class B Porsche who got caught up in all of that. Yep, Estra went through, but Chaz Mostert's got damage and the Bentley's got damage. And I'll tell you what, if we go safety car, timing of the millennium for car 74. Just they, come into the pits. Yep. So Chris Harsa jumps out of that car. We expect it to be Marcus Winklehock jumping in. I don't know about you, I don't think that needed to happen. I don't no. think any of that needed to Agreed. occur. Why would you just wait till Conrad straight? Agreed. Drive Agreed. past them in a straight line. You could see the frustration building though, couldn't you? I think Mostert had got a taste for it. He almost pulled the move on the Porsche. Safety car, extra pits. Right, on board with Mostert. He's almost there the first time, and then as he comes down, there's an opportunity. It's Kevin Estra in the 991 Porsche. Ducks out one way, then the other. Already one tap. Then he goes round the outside. That's a brilliant, brilliant bold manoeuvre. And then I think he's going to tap the Bentley. Yes, he does. And he puts the Bentley into the 40 Porsche. I, I think that's on Chaz. I, he yeah. got caught up behind the yellow Porsche on the outside of the road there. Tried to find a hole in the middle that didn't really exist. There was maybe just a car with there. This will show it sure, even better. Percy. I'm not sure. The 91 leader in the Invitational class was in that as well. But Mostert's put himself in the wrong part of the track. Then has to... Oh, he gets a tap. Mostert got a tap from Estra as well. Yeah. It's the only person I think that with abs that I can say with some degree of certainty, with absolutely no blame, unfortunately, oh. is the Bentley and Stephen Kidd. So Mostert gave Estra a whack coming out of the S's. This will be interesting. Oh, did he come bang, across? Bang, 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 bang. Well, it's, it's, he's it's trying to get three abreast out of the Bentley elbow with one of those cars nowhere near the speed of a GT3. Yeah. It's a back marker. The, irrelevant to who's at fault in that incident, and race control will already be looking at it. Um, I, I think that's silly. I don't think that needed to happen. No. They're, they're no. just about to get to 1.8 kilometres of long straight where the GT3 cars would have easily blown past the lap traffic and it would have all been sorted out. Bentley's going to go into the garage. The Bentley's going to go into the garage. There's damage to the front right suspension and the curse of the mountain has hit Bentley and M Sport again. The other car involved there is the 40 Porsche, who's had a bit of That's a day, to be honest. Kane Booker puffing pretty hard, having got out of that car. Yeah, he was, he was the pinball in all of that. The Mercedes-AMG E63 S sedan, four litre V8 by turbo Beermoth of an engine pulling that car around and it's deployed again. And the reason for that is a bit of unnecessary contact. Three cars battling 
tap going down through the S's on the back of the Porsche from the BMW. Opportunity to go around the outside, but then gets blocked by a slower Porsche. I'm going to go to the left. Oh, no, I've tapped somebody else, and I've put the third-place car into the wall and myself out of the race. Put the onboard from Kevin Estra was really interesting as well in the Craft Bamboo Racing Porsche. So watch the BMW around the outside. He goes around the Bentley, goes, yep, cool move. Oh, no, hang on. This lap Porsche is in my way. I need to find a hole. Then there's contact as he moves across one way. Estra moves across the other. And the poor old Bentley had zero role to play in that, aside from trying to find its own way past the back markers. And the Porsche as well, once oh, yeah. you see it. Yeah. He got a really big hit. Now, Kevin Estra gets a tap. He was lucky not to end up in the wall, Shane Van Gisbergen style, last yeah. year. Let's the BMW go around the outside. Mm. Now, Mostert comes across. Yes, he does, for my money. How the heck the 991 gets through that relatively unscathed? That's unbelievable. Well, Kevin Estrup, how did you get through that? Well, I uh, have seen uh, again the the uh, the onboard and everything. It's uh, yeah, it was interesting. I mean, I I was a bit stuck behind the Bentley and uh, and behind me the BMW got frustrated. At one point, he started to you know push me. And then he tried on the outside in Forest Elbow. I was a bit stuck in the inside. He couldn't really go wild. I couldn't stay more left and, uh, and then somehow I think it touches the Porsche then he came to me then touched the Bentley and I just went through with some small scratches but uh, a lot of luck it was a bit yeah it was a hard stint because the Bentley was a bit quicker or is quicker than us in the straight couldn't overtake and then the BMW has his strengths as well so uh, it was yeah it was a tough one but I think he took a bit too much risk there. Is it Earl into the end or is Lawrence getting back in? Oh, I think it's Earl because I think Lawrence drove enough already so uh, now we keep the Kiwi for the end. Good luck. Thank you. Well, New South Wales is a great place to see and explore. Did you know, and this is a really interesting fact, the Blue Mountains are 10 times older than the Great uh, Grand Canyon. And its national park spans uh, over 250,000 hectares and has 140 kilometres of walking trails. There's also 14 different wine regions which produces world famous wines been a long stop for the 100 because they've done rotors and brakes, so discs and brakes, and they're going to get out just in front of the pack as in comes the 12 right at the end. That's still not within. I don't oh, think that will oh, be That's the leader going off. Yes, it is. Yeah, Marcus Winklehock jumps to the front in the Audi. So it's all teeing off. He's going to go a lap down here. Car 100, Timo Glock, if he's not very, very careful and doesn't get out of pit lane all too quickly. That might be the moment that ends their race. Timo Glock has to stay on the lead lap here. He's got brand new brakes in this car. He's got new tyres and a full tank of fuel. But he's going to be a lap down that went much longer than it needed to. Pat Long did peel into the pits in the competition motorsport. The icebreak car number 12 and the 100 does go. A lap down, key moment of the race for another key contender. So they left Pat out as long as they could, but we're still at 2 hours 20. 2.20, and it has to be two minutes and nine. So just around about 11 minutes too early. So Pat's got to come out and do a bit longer in the car. We'll confirm those numbers for you. That The team will be pretty upset, I would have thought. Now, there will be pit stops coming, but we're very early into the stint for a lot of these leaders. So Glock's just got to run with these guys now and hope that he can work his way past or something goes his way. Otherwise, we scratch another contender out of our Fink rankings for this one. Finkelhock's only been out four laps. So he came in right at the start of that yellow flag period. There's the ice break. Coffee-sponsored Porsche getting a full service. Finkelhock in fantastic position. Yeah. You called it, Creelsey. So two minds there about whether to overtake or not. I'm not sure he knew how far David Feminelli was going to go off the road, but as soon as he was in the gravel, that was fine. He could overtake. Did he before overtake the line. before the line? Oh, yeah, yeah, because the other guy was off in the grass. I've been wrong before. It, it's been known to happen, but I, I think at the moment our contenders are the 74 Audi. Great. I think the 75 Great. Uh, AMG GT3 and probably the 991 Porsche with Earl Bamba behind the wheel. I think they're the three most likely at the moment, obviously with plenty to play out. I, I liked uh, Fred Magavecki into that as well in the 911. Yeah, okay. yep. uh, and depending on what time's left, Robert French behind the wheel of the WRT car. I think Stu Leonard's done his time, so Robert may well be taking that car at the end, and he's a tiny peddler. Mike 
not be an overall contender, but he could be a, he could be a dark horse for a podium. Patlock out of the ice brake Porsche. Great fuel mileage for that car. They've just made their sixth stop of the race, and Alex Davison has got in to the competition motorsport number 12 Porsche. So they should be able to go to the end on one stop from here, yeah. you'd think. There'll be a 35 or 36 lap stint, maybe more, depending on what occurs in the next hour or so. Plug young Matt Campbell into the finish. Yeah. And then uh, see where it ends up. And because they stopped a little bit later on in that sequence, they didn't lose a lap, but they're right at the very end of the queue. They don't have track position, but maybe they've got a little bit more flexibility in how that strategy is going to work out. So I'll amend what I said before. I still think they're a shot and you'd bet your bottom dollar that we're still going to have at least one more SC before the end of this one at some point, surely, with everything that's gone on today. I thought we were looking Sorry. good there as it all settled down. And I'm just going to apologise in advance for inevitably bringing that up. Slight moment of madness, perhaps, that was an unnecessary move with that much rain. Less in the... This much left in the race. So, Patlon Peels into the pit lane as we go back to green. And then David Firminelli loses it on entry to Maguire's Murray corner and through goes Marcus Vingelhock. Oh, oh and wow. we've got another wheel gone missing coming down the hill. That's the triple seven, the Ben Motorsport Park Lamborghini. Drama's early in the race, back as right with a Luke Wilden behind the wheel. Missing. He had a great run earlier on. Now, is this going to be another full course yellow? Bentley's coming out of the lane. The 17 car comes out. It's drop time. And there'll not be a big finish for that car. Jules Cunon has got in the car. It's lost four laps and more. Check that, six laps now. But we will get, I think, a full course yellow here. Well, there's a wheel in the middle of the track, yes. Yeah, yeah there we go. Cronard straight, driver's right. Race control have told our safety car driver in the Mercedes AMG E63S to put out the lights and pull away, and now it is Vinky, Marcus Winkelhock against Robert Freitz, against Jamie Winkup and Earl Bamba and Mako, Fred Makovicki. It's supercar driver Jamie Winkle versus the world of endurance racing. Cutting a bit of a lawn figure there. He's got Tim Slade down in sixth position. Just to back up a little bit, the local driving talent. Green, 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 and we are restarting for the 14th time. Vinkelhock, not a great start. He's allowed everyone to drag up behind him, immediately pulls half a car's length or a car's length over to the left-hand side, then back to the racing line. As he comes down to the first corner, turned in a bit early there, I think he was worried about Frights coming up the inside there. And not once in the last half an hour have we mentioned sliding that objective racing McLaren, but they are every much in this race right, as everyone else in this leading battle pack. These cars are all on the lead lap. They are all fighting for the lead of the race. And around the outside goes Fred McAvicki. Actually, correction, sorry, that's El Bamber, isn't it? So he's lost a spot. Yeah, discretion, valor, part better. Rearranged to make a well-known phrase for seeing that. The confusing thing is that Philip Eng is stuck in the middle of all this, and he's a lap down, of course, but El Bamber and Fred McAvicki didn't get the best exit out of turn number one, particularly Fred, from, uh, Fred out of that corner because he kicked up the dust into the face of Tim Slade. Does anybody get closer to the wall consistently at BP Ultimate Reed Park than Marcus Vingelhock? It's been like that all day. I was, he's extraordinarily precise there. It's not like, I mean, he has slid up to it, but he's driving up to it frailty in a way that I just don't see anyone else having the confidence to do. Pulling away from Robin Fryens now. We cut third. As JP mentioned, the BMW is not in fourth place. It's a lap down, which is of some frustration to all of us because that last pit stop they made just did not roll their way. And they dropped off the lead lap. Planned service for that car that took it out of contention mm. with brake changes going on. Frustrating, but nevertheless, we'll see if they can work their way back on. Plenty of time to go. Behind them, El Bamba. Then Fred McAwicki. 
Tim Slade in the McLaren, in your own Blake Molin in car 540. So the Porsches have all stacked up. There's four of them in the top 10. Every single one of them can win this race. Agreed. They've got weight in numbers. And down the inside, Tim Slade looking to put a move on McElwick. He couldn't get it done. It seems as though the Porsches take a couple of three extra laps to get into their stride. Tim Slade has got heat and pressure into his Pirellis very quickly indeed in that dark coloured objective McLaren. And that Macca has just stealthed its way back into contention where perhaps didn't get the roll of the dice early on. And last time Tim Slade was in the car, they left him in and hoped that the race would come to them. It didn't. Took them off the lead lap for a wee while, but they've schemed their way back. And now they are in with a chance, in with a good chance. And it sounds like we've got potentially Winklehock as it yep. stopped out on track yeah, right now. drama, Goodness massive me. drama. And Winkelhock from the lead. And the irony of irony that he's in the Audi Sport cutting and the car is dead stick. He's allowing it to roll backwards down the hill at the moment. And this is massive news. At the front of the field, the team will be gutted for him. Meantime, it's scramble, heads together. And this is where the data engineers earn their money. What is the situation now for the run in the last one hour and 37 minutes? And the car is just stish. I'm not sure that's hit the wall, Creelsy, if I'm honest. It's no. only done 27 laps since it was last in the pit lane. Surely this can't be pit uh, fueling issues. And race control will give them every opportunity to get that car fired up. So they'll try and let them fire it up. Let's have a listen. Listen to the engine. It's fine going up the mountain straight. Griffin's bent, that's good. Oh, transmission. That's part of the gearbox. He's, the transmission's gone, and he's got no drive to the rear wheels. And uh, we apologise for anything that you might be hearing through the internal camera. Well, he's got every right to be upset, because they were the best position of anybody Leading to, the race. to win this one. And the safety car call, but I was going to make the point that race control will give them every time to refire the car if it is not a terminal issue, but it is. That car stopped. It's not going anywhere. <sighs> wow. Extraordinary. And Finkelhock knows that he has been robbed of a really good finish and possibly a victory. Horrible sense of irony that that car should come up short at the Audi Sport Cutting as well. And that's the look on both of the Christophers right now, Hasa and Mies. Mies has his gear on and was ready to go. I'll see if he feels like talking right now. We'll pop down for a quick word. You were ready to get in that car. It's been perfect all day, Christopher. I understand the frustration right now, but what's going through your head? Uh, it's better if I don't say anything right now, I think. Um we were in a position to win that race for sure. Uh, yeah. Have you heard gearbox related, transmission related? I didn't hear anything, but how it looked like, he went over the curb and then probably the drive shaft broke. So that's how it looks like for me from the onboard video, but I don't know. I have, I have no radio on, so I don't know what's, what's happening, but just from what, what, I thought, what I saw on the video is, I think, drive shaft. Have you ever had this happen before where you've been so close at the end of a day and had this go wrong? Well, I don't know what I did to the racing god, but uh, we had a gearbox failure in Dubai, looking good. Um, we got blocked by IMSA Series in Daytona for the for the win, and now looking again quite close to get it done, and another time, I don't know. Unlucky, Christopher. So close to being a three-time winner. <sighs> the Land Motorsport he was part of at uh, Daytona a couple of weeks ago, the 29 car, given a five-minute penalty. Uh, and then nothing found to be wrong with the car. Some controversial circumstances on the BOP there. And as you can see, that's added together to make the start of his 2018 racing year. One that he's probably wants and I want to forget. In comes the 75, Jamie Wincup from second position. Stagecar is in pit lane. 
I reckon this is a 40 lap run to the flag from here. Green, green, green. It's going to be tight though. On fuel, Magaveggi will lead them back to the green flag at the start finish line. The car behind is not in contention. The bike, green, yellow, Mantai Racing Porsche has the resurgent Jude Scudon behind the wheel of the Bentley. That car taken out of the race earlier on in terms of contention for the lead. David Fulminelli is in second position and he is the first of the Mercedes AMG GT. Three cars as they head up Audi Mountain straight. Let the Bentley go, let it go. It's the leader of the race, Jules. You can't be getting involved. If you're going to make a pass, you've got to make it straight away. Or if you're the leader, just let him go. Let him go by. Yeah. It's not going to cost you any time. Got a little bit of margin over Fuminelli behind in the 55 car. Remember, Creelty, it just takes the Porsches a lap or two more to get the Pirellis up the temperature. There's no weight over the front wheels. I think that's the issue with these guys. They're getting a bit of punch, a little bit of understeer in the early laps, even as this track is rubbering in towards the end of this 12-hour contest and all of the running that we've had leading up to the 5.45 start this morning. The countdown is on to the chequered flag now. The teams will be hoping that their work for the most part is done. So the 911 car cannot get home from here without stopping again at 25 Correct. laps in to this stint. So Fred McAwicki needs to get his head down, pull the margin. Correct and try and drive away. Back in fourth place, we find a young Kiwi by the name of Earl Bamba from Wanganui, not too far from Auckland, uh, in the North Island, lovely part of the world. He's uh, a winner at Le Mans. He's a world champion for Porsche. He's behind the wheel of a Porsche 911 GT3R, and we think he can get home. That may be the car in the box seat at this point in time. OK, time to go to work for the Manta Racing team for the last time today. The key again, just like it was earlier for the Mercedes pit stop, get the driver change done, Makovicki out, Duma in before the fuel is filled. Now, a keen eye down here could probably see that, yes, they do have Pirelli tyres here, but that's just as a safety. I think if this does go long in the driver change, they'll throw tyres on it, but the plan is at the moment to roll the dice. Very quick out and in from the drivers. It's now a question of getting those belts done up. These Porsche works, guys. Practice and practice and practice. Got to get out in front of Lewis Williamson because we know that he can go all the way. And the Stracker Mercedes AMG GT3 is in the boost mobile chase right now. The Porsche's fired up and gone. Magnificent change from Manti. And will get out off the pit lane speed limit and up Audi Mountain Street. My goodness, Manti come to life. And that puts that car in with a shout of something. I'm not sure what, but it's a shout of something. Well, they're miles ahead of Strucker Racing, so don't need to worry so much about Williamson at the moment. So that car now can go to the end with Roman Dumas. It doesn't have new rubber, but it does have enough fuel drills in. Yeah, and it can go hard, that's the difference, yes. Chad Naylor may have more. Well, it's actually about this car, guys. Sorry to segue, but the 11, the objective car, that issue that it had earlier where it couldn't get into gear has come back on its last stop. And obviously this time they had about 20 million officials watching it to make sure that they didn't get away with another one. So it's going back in the garage. It won't start under, under its own power. And that is a heartbreaker so close to the finish. And to make life worse, they had to move the fuel rig and everything else to be able to get it back into the garage. Number crunching going on. Uh, the... 10 pound lump hammer, lots of gaffer tape, and now a smartphone as well, because you need all of those things to an endurance race. You need the little light in the phone to shine up underneath when you need to find out what to hit with the hammer. And you can use it as a calculator as well to work out your fuel flow. The Winter Olympics are coming up on the screens of seven in the coming weeks. I wonder if today we might use that Aussie vernacular doing a Bradbury. I wonder if someone will come from the stars to win this. It feels a bit like that at the moment. This really awkward situation where everyone's trying to get home, but we're not sure if they can actually do it. Well, I'm just going to add in the mix here because I've been watching times outside the top six of Lewis Williamson. I'm not sure with 90 seconds between him and the leader that he can make the top step of the podium, but he's gradually closing in on Romain Dumas. 205s and 204s for the 55 car. 
and in traffic, it would appear that the Strata Mercedes AMG GT3 is a little bit sharper than the Porsches ahead of him. Earl was out of the throttle before the kick at the chase. Yeah, that's how much he's saving fuel at the moment. Coasting his way around Mount Panorama. Porsche here are playing the factory game, aren't they? This is old school from Porsche. This is how they've won 19 Le Mans 24-hour races and a bajillion 24-hour races around the world. They're getting their teams together, and Frank Stefan Valliser will be the man down there who's visiting all of them. Black Swan Racing has Mark Lee. Mechanical sympathy, certainly from that driver, who's a highly qualified engineer. That's fourth place. I think he's catching the car ahead. He's definitely catching him. Campbell's still flying. He's the fastest guy on the racetrack at the moment. He's still in the fours. I don't think they're worrying about whether they can get to the end or not. He's just been given a mission to go for it. If it runs out, it runs out. So be it. But if it runs out and they're in front of the Black Swan racing car and that runs out as well, well, it's probably better. I don't know how, actually. I don't even know if that makes sense. Remember, they're fighting over the BRM Watchers Pro-Am trophy to get a, one of those amazing, one of six only BRM chronograph. Five, because Chad got yeah. one, don't yeah. forget. That's not gone back. He's got a lot this week. He did. Riding an AMG with Pete Hackett. Watch. Got on a simulator, which is probably the best of the lot. Campbell can win this race. Yep. I remain fixed to that. At the very least, they can definitely be on the definitely be on the podium for this one. 22 laps, so we're getting towards 10, 11, 22 minutes rather, 10 or 11 laps to go yep. around here. The countdown is on at the mountain and we'll take you all the way through to the checkered flag and the winner of the 2018 Liquid Body Bathurst 12, hour, 12 hours will have earned this one. A race of attrition, a race of drama, controversy, incident and accident and it's coming down to fuel mileage. This is endurance racing at Bathurst. Robin Fry is doing a 2.08 on lap 271. They're trying to stretch it so that this race will be 281 laps in total rather than 282, but I'm still not sure that that makes much of a difference for the leading Audi R8. It might help the guys behind them, of course, because I'm still not convinced that 37 car can go another 10 laps. That would make it a 41 laps, even if it's only nine laps, eight laps, that would be... 39, 38 laps, and we haven't seen an Audi do that in green flag all day. Well, if that car wins this race, it'll do a Captain Kirk and boldly go where no Audi's gone before because uh, they just haven't had that economy all day. So just to reiterate, we're not convinced that anyone in the top four can make it home, and there's still a question mark and some biting of nails going on. The car in fifth place, oh, there's a safety it. car. That's it, the 69 Superbot. Oh, Audi man. has gone around, Ash Waltz. And there's a Merc Three cars. up there as well, Mercedes AMG GT3. And the last car, I think, up against the wall. That's an enormous accident. Full course yellow. Now all bets are off. All bets are off. And down at Audi, they're oh. getting ready for a car potentially to come in. Say it again. So they're just communicating with the driver of car 19. It's John Martin behind the wheel. There's a Mark car there. It's the, so the driver moving around. Let's have a look. It's the WRT yeah, car. That's the leader going through. The wind cup goes through as well. And crunch. Where does the Merc come in? Comes uh, in afterwards. Wait. Oh, wow, that was close. Just wait. The Merc's going to nail the door. Oh, oh no. Straight in. That is... Fortunately, a left-hand drive car, so the driver on the far side from this secondary impact. Two cars losing it almost in synchronization at the top of the mountain. The Mark V8 and the Super Barn Audi, and then the agonizing wheel. Oh, that's a bad noise. That's a bad noise. Wow, that's the safety car that Audi Sport WRT wanted, though. It's 
John Martin in the 19 Mercedes that came in Nowhere laterally. Go. Well, indeed, yep. mean, he got the nose of the Mercedes out of the way, but oh, they're already into a lurid slide. See drivers out of the car, which is a good sign. But three cars involved. No attempt being made at the moment to recover any of the cars. They are all in seriously damaged Race control to all teams. Race control to all teams. The race has been declared. The race has been declared. The safety car will lead the field into Park Ferme. We will require car 37 to proceed slowly to, the po to perform podium procedures. I repeat, the race has been declared. Due to and Audi have won the 2018 Liqui Volley Bathurst 12 hours. The cheering that you could hear was from the WRT team. They hear it over race control radio. It's an odd way to hear about winning a race. They've not seen the chequered flag. There'll be no more racing. And this is a unique set of circumstances here at the Liqui Volley Bathurst 12 hours. Wow. Third victory for Audi at Mount Panorama. Their last one was in 2012 with Phoenix Racing. They now tie Mazda as the most successful brand ever at Mount Panorama in 12-hour endurance races. They won three of them straight between 92 and 94. In the GT era, they are the most successful brand ever now. And on their first visit to the mountain, Audi Sport Team WRT win the Liqui Moly Bathurst 12 hour and they will add that trophy to their vast, vast trophy cabinet that includes all of the major GT endurance races that the world has to offer. This was the one that was missing for WRT to get the opportunity and they've come and done it. What a fantastic result under, I'm sure they will think slightly unsatisfactory circumstances, but you've got to be in it to win it. It's an Audi win, gentlemen, congratulations. Well done, your first time here driving, what a way to kick it off. Yeah, last year we didn't have the luck on the side. After 10 minutes we crashed, uh, very unfortunate, but we came back strong. Uh, during the race we had some problems. The first three hours or four hours we didn't have the radio, so we were struggling to, to box at the, at the right point. So. But um, yeah, the last couple of hours, last stint especially, with fuel saving, a lot of fuel saving, and I think Jamie was doing the same thing, and um, tried to keep the gap as well, so it was quite tough, but eventually we kept it together and we won. What a day. Where Incredible. Start? Uh, yeah, absolutely right, Krailzy. Wind the clock back, 12 hours, and we had a st start in the darkness for the 2018 running of the Liquimati Bathurst, 12 hours. Two Mercedes colliding at the top of the hill, and then a big off to the KTM and David Crampton. That's KTM crossbow looking very, very second-hand after an incident at the Bentley elbow. This has been an action-packed area to be spectating. Andrew Bagnall rushed to hospital after a collision in the number 82 Audi. We understand he's OK. And this was Kelvin van der Linde asking a little too much of his Pirelli tyres at the Shannon's Dipper going around the outside of a Mark car and hitting the wall very hard indeed. A big fine for Chas Mostert, judged to be at fault for this incident, which involved three cars and very nearly Kevin Estra in the nine 9-1 Porsche as well. He just managed to sneak through. And uh, the driver of the Porsche badly affected by that as well. OK, now, though, this is the onboard site and slowing for Marcus Winkelhock, the race leader at the time. And this a huge incident as John Martin comes piling round the corner in the 19 Mercedes, smashing into the side of Ash Walsh, who's sitting there bracing for impact. That was huge and resulted in an unprecedented red flag to bring the 2018 running of the Liquid Molly Bathurst 12 out to an early finish. The cars parked up on the main straight under park Ferme conditions, and then with about five minutes to go, there's that hit again, sickening. It doesn't get any easier to watch that. Five minutes to go on the clock. The result is declared. I make that the very first Belgian flagged team to win this race. Also first British winner overall. 
and first Dutchman as well with Stuart Leonard and Robin Frines respectively. Congratulations to Dries Van Tour to younger brother of Lawrence. 270 laps completed, 271 laps completed, 1,683 Ks. That's how the top 10 stands. Seven cars finishing on the lead lap is a record for this race. The previous best was five on two occasions. Audi, Mercedes, AMG and Porsche represented on the podium. And check out the Porsches stacking third, fourth, fifth and sixth places. Over the page, some interesting stories to tell for these cars. What could have been for a whole lot of them, as is often the case here at Mount Panorama. Class B taken out by the Grove Group Porsche. So that's the third victory for them. Invitational class goes to Mark Cars Australia. What a remarkable day at Mount Panorama. Another day of records, another day of incredible motor racing and a long, long list of non-finishers from the 50 starters that greeted the green flag at 5.45am this morning. John Hindoff uh, with me just to try and wrap up what we've seen here today. Remarkable, really, wasn't it? I mean, you see these races right around the world. Have you ever seen anything like what we saw today? I don't see that every day, Mark. I mean, extraordinary. We came here expecting history to be made with a distance record. Yeah. What we got was history with more cars on the lead lap at the end of the race than ever before. And an extraordinary amount of entertainment. Incident, accident. Good news is all the drivers got out of it OK. I mean, what does this race keep throwing up? I've got no clue what's going to happen next year. Hey, we have had a fantastic time up here. Hope you've enjoyed it. John, great to have you back. Can you come back next year? I've already, I'm going to get my tickets booked before I leave, man. This is fantastic. You think <laughs> I'm going to miss this? I don't know how we'll keep you away. It's been fantastic to all our team. A great effort. It's been a brilliant one. Thanks very much. We'll see you next year for the Liquid Molly Bathurst 12 Hour. <laughs>